Hello, good morning, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's 8 o'clock on Friday the 4th of August. Reading morning prayer on Friday in ordinary time from the Church of England Common Worship. Also the Lesser Festival of Francis of Assisi. Heard of him? If you are following the book, you'll find the words for the main part of the service at the front towards the beginning after prayer during the day in the morning and evening prayer during ordinary time section, morning prayer on Friday, but it might pay you to look up 4th of October halfway through amongst the saints' days and festivals to pick up the alternative elements and the collect, open closing refrain for the Song of Zechariah when we get there. If you're following online, the Church of England's website, Arima's Daily Prayer, and uh, on mobile devices, it's possible to get apps for morning and evening prayer from Ama or Alma. The same person behind that is behind uh, Arimus, the uh, web-based version. You're welcome to join me in person in the building, 8 and 6, Tuesday to Saturday, or by Zoom. The Zoom code is on the Bride Church's website and Facebook page, on which we're live streaming. And the audio will appear on my Dominic Dover YouTube channel in due course. Welcome. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. A song of triumph, Psalm 95. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving, and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. <clears throat> oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your heart as at Meribah on that day at Massa in the wilderness, when your forebears tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, This people are wayward in their hearts, they do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. <clears throat> the night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, say, may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> the appointed psalms this morning, 88 and 95 again. We have it as a psalm as well as the opening canticle. I'm inclined to read it through a second time. It doesn't do us any harm to repeat. Psalms 88 and 95. You'll find the Psalter at the back of the book. <clears throat> psalms 88 and 95. You are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. O Lord God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before you. Let my prayer come into your presence. Incline your ear to my cry. My soul is full of troubles. My life draws near to the land of death. I am counted as one gone down to the pit. I am like one that has no strength. Lost among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave. You may remember no more, for they are cut off from your hands. You have laid me in the lowest pit, in a place of darkness in the abyss. Your anger lays heavy upon me, and you have afflicted me with all your waves. You have put my friends far from me, and made me to be abhorred by them. I am so fast in prison that I cannot get free. My eyes fail from all my trouble. Lord, I have called daily upon you. I stretch out my hands to you. Do you work wonders for the dead? Will the shade stand up and praise you? Shall your loving kindness be declared in the grave? your faithfulness in the land of destruction. Shall your wonders be known in the dark? 
or your righteous deeds in all the land, in the land where all is forgotten. But as for me, O Lord, I will cry to you early in the morning. My prayer shall come before you. Why have you rejected my soul? Why have you hidden your face from me? I have been wretched and at the point of death from my youth. Suffer your terrors and I'm no, I suffer your terrors and I am no more seen. Your wrath sweeps over me. Your horrors are come to destroy me. <clears throat> All day long they come about me like water. They close me in on every side. Lover and friend have you put far from me and hid my companions out of my sight. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. You are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. <clears throat> One of my occasional comments on Psalms. If you join us on a Friday, you're bound to get Psalms that are slightly more miserable as a reflection, as an echo of Good Friday, which comes round once a year. But it enables us to recognise that there are there is space in God for brokenness. Be inspired and encouraged. Come, let us worship and bow down. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejo rejoice in the ro rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah on that day at Massa in the wilderness, when your forebears tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, <clears throat> This people are wayward in their hearts. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. <clears throat> Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Come, let us worship and bow down. <coughs> Scrolling past our first reading, if you're following electronically, uh, turning back to morning prayer on Friday, if you're following in the book. To the Song of Humility. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. Come, let us return to the Lord who has torn us and will heal us. God has stricken us and will bind up our wounds. After two days he will revive us, and on the third day will raise us up that we may live in his presence. <clears throat> Let us strive to know the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the sunrise. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. O Ephraim, how shall I deal with you? How shall I deal with you, O Judah? Your love for me is like the morning mist like the dew that goes early away. <clears throat> Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For loyalty is my desire and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Raise us up, O God, that we may live in your presence. From Kindle edition of Celebrating the Saints, Francis was born in Assisi in central Italy in either 1181 or the following year. <clears throat> he was baptised Giovanni, but given the name Francesco by his father, a cloth merchant who traded in France and married a French wife. There was an expectation that he would eventually take over his father's business, but Francis had a rebellious youth and a difficult relationship with his father. After suffering the ignominy of imprisonment following capture whilst at war with the local city of Perugia, he returned a changed man. He took to caring for disused churches and for the poor, particularly those suffering from leprosy. Whilst praying in the semi-derelict church of St. Damien, he distinctly heard the words, Go and repair my church, which you see is falling down. Others joined him, and he prepared a simple gospel-based rule for them to all to live by. As the order grew, it witnessed to Christ through preaching the gospel of repentance, emphasising the poverty of Christ as an example for his followers. <clears throat> and two years before his death, his life being so closely linked with that of his crucified saviour, Francis received the stigmata, the marks of the wounds of Christ on his body. At his death on the evening of the 3rd of October, 1226, his order had spread throughout Western Christ Christendom. <clears throat> Francis was easy.
So to my next reading, 2 Kings 12, 1 to 19. You'll find 2 Kings after 1 Kings, funnily enough, in the uh, history section of the Hebrew Scriptures, which is about a quarter of the way into your Holy Bible if you have both covenants in front of you. You'll find 1 and 2 Samuel, 1 2 Kings, 1 2 Chronicles, I think it's that order. <clears throat> it seems to be coming to my mind as I'm going through and be saying I'm not sure where this comes in that order of six, but I think you'll find Kings after Samuel, Chronicles following. I may be wrong. It's about there, a quarter of the way in. Second book of Kings, two Kings in the title. Number 12 in the margin, chapter 12, chapter 12, Second Kings, and we're reading from verse 1. Verse 1, chapter 12, Second Kings, also available online just before the canticle read a moment ago. In the seventh year of Jehu, Je- Jehoash began to reign. He reigned for 40 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zibia of Beersheba. Jehoash did what was right in sight of the Lord all his days because the priest Jehoiada instructed him. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away. The people continued to sacrifice and make offerings on the high places. Jehoash said to the priests, all the money offered as sacrifice, sacred donations that is brought into the house of the Lord, the money for which each person is assessed, the money from the assessment of persons, the money from the voluntary offerings brought into the house of the Lord. Let the priests receive from each of the donors and let them repair the house wherever they need any need of repairs is discovered. But by the 23rd year of King Jehoash, the priests made no repairs to the house. Therefore, King Jehoash summoned the priest Jehoiada with the other priests and said to them, Why are you not repairing a house? Now, therefore, do not accept any more money from your donors, but hand it over to the repair, for the repair of the house. So the priests agreed that they would neither accept money from the people nor repair the house. Then the priest Jehoiada took a chest, made a hole in its lid, and set it beside the altar on the right side as he entered the house of the Lord. The priests who guarded the threshold put in it all the money that was brought into the house of the Lord. Whenever they saw that there was a great deal of money in the chest, the king's secretary and the high priest went up, counted the money that was found in the house of the Lord, and tied it up in bags. They gave the money that was weighed out into the hands of the workers who had oversight of the house of the Lord, and they paid it out to the carpenters and the builders who worked on the house of the Lord, to the masons and the stone cutters as well, to buy timber and quarried stone for making repairs on the house of the Lord, as well as for any outlay for repairs of the house. But for the house of the Lord, no bases of silver, snuffers, bowls, trumpets, or any vessels of gold or of silver were made from the money that was brought into the house of the Lord. But that was given to the workers who were repairing the house of the Lord with it. They did not ask for an account from those who dealt, in whose, into whose hand they delivered the money to pay out to the workers, for they dealt honestly the money from the guilt offerings, and the money from the sin offerings was not brought into the house of the Lord, it belonged to the priests. And that time King Hazael of Aram went up, fought against Gath, and took it. When Hazael set his face to go up against Jerusalem, King Jehoash of Judah took all the votive gifts that chose fat Joram and Hazael and his ancestors. The kings of Judah dedicated to well his own votive gifts all the gold that was found in the treasure of the house of the Lord, the king's house, and sent these King Hazael of Aram. Hazel withdrew from Jerusalem. Now the rest of the acts of Joash and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? <coughs> so, a few paragraphs in, on Jehoash. The um, second two, uh, basically what parochial church councils do today. Um, look for money wherever they can find it and use it to fix the building. And uh, long may it continue. And that's one of the significant uh, features of our job as uh, church wardens, incumbents, BC members, is uh, warming people up to the value and worth of these excellent medieval buildings dotted about as signs of time and place, markers of family and history and future, and uh, inspiring people to give, not only for the building, but also for its mission, mission and ministry, uh, and its paid clergy. And people still do, not only money, but also time and skills, and we thank God for that, and we pray blessing on all of our PCCs, all of which need at least another active church warden, and uh, many need a treasurer or a secretary, and uh, all could do with another four active, ambitious, happy, jolly, connected people to join them. But then it all goes a bit wrong in the last paragraph, where we're told that um, a marauding local monarch turns up to um, take over Jerusalem and uh, Jehoash having put all this money to restoring the building gives all the um, vessels used for worship to this um, oppressor it does buy his peace but uh, given what we've read of other um, sovereigns in uh, kings he'd have done better to ask God to help him but he obviously takes matters in his own hands and uh, gives all the gold to his enemy. And then that standard conclusion, just like he says at the beginning, in the seventh year of blah, 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 so and so began to reign. Um, and at the end, we've got the rest of the Acts 
of this person? Are they not written in the Kings? And we've just read them from the Kings there. So to Acts 28, 1 to 16, our next reading, we scroll on to that. Uh, Acts, if you're following the Bible, comes after, or a written edition comes after the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, about two-thirds of the way through. And also known as the second Gospel of Luke, or the continuation of the Gospel of Luke. We're looking at the book of Acts, a little over uh, two-thirds of the way into your Bible. Book of Acts, number 28 in the margin, chapter 28 in the book of Acts, and we're reading from verse 1 to verse 16 in chapter 28 in the book of Acts. <clears throat> After we had reached safety, we then learned that the island was called Malta. The natives showed us unusual kindness. Since it began to rain and was cold, they kindled a fire and welcomed all of us round it. Paul had gathered bundles of brushwood and was putting it on the fire when a viper driven out by the heat fastened itself on his hand. <clears throat> when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, This man must be a murderer, though he has escaped from the sea. Justice has not allowed him to live. He, however, shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. They were expecting him to swell up or drop dead, but after they had waited a long time and saw that nothing unusual had happened to him, they changed their minds and began to say that he was a god. Now in the neighbourhood of that place there were lands belonging to the leading man of the island named Publius, who received and entertained us hospitably for three days. So it so happened that the father of Publius lay sick in bed with fever and dysentery. Paul visited him and cured him by praying and putting his hands on him. After this happened, the rest of the people on the island who had diseases also came and were cured. They bestowed many honours on us. On us, on us, and when we were about to sail, they put on board all the provisions we needed. Three months later, we set sail on a ship that had wintered at the island, an Alexandrian ship with the twin brothers as its figurehead. We put in at Syracuse and stayed there for three days. Then we weighed anchor and came to Regium. After one day there, a south and sprang up. On the second day, we came to Petoli. There we found believers and were invited to stay with them for seven days, and so we came to Rome. The believers from there, when they heard of us, came as far as the Forum of Appius and the Three Taverns to meet us. On seeing them, Paul thanked God and took courage. When he came into Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with the soldier who was guarding him. <coughs> so we've moved from them discovering the island that they'd managed to swim to from their broken ship being called Malta, through a very quick, straightforward passage of sailing, to Rome. And as I was reading it, I almost felt that sense of relief in Paul that he had arrived. It's, uh, he's nervous, he's excited, or nerve sighted, as one of our uh, nieces, I think, put it, <coughs> or uh, friends of, uh, child of friends of ours. Uh, he doesn't know where he is, he doesn't know what's facing him except death, I guess, in the medium term. <coughs> but uh, his aim was to get to Rome, that snake biting him, the shipwreck, <coughs> the uh, sailors or soldiers wanted to kill all the prisoners on the boat before it went down, <coughs> the two or three um, attempts on his life that were planned, which led to his um, appealing to the Tribune or ending up in the Tribune's care in the first place. Now, here he is at Rome, and it's just another chapter, but here he is. And we might find in our lives today, last month, a year's time, that we reach another point that we have been striving for for some while. Doing a degree, we've got the degree, we find a job. We're looking for a relationship, We're looking for the ending of uh, selling a property. And we want that uh, sale to go through and be concluded. But whatever it is, at the moment it all seems a bit of a mess. But uh, reading through our story today, it will come right in the end. And as we travel through our lives, as we travel through today, some people think we're great and some people less so. So it was with Paul. There they were thinking he was a murderer who's going to die because he'd escaped the shipwreck, but a snake had bit him. Then as they see him praying for people and God healing them, they decide he's a god. It's kind of the opposite to Jesus turning up in Jerusalem. They think he's going to take over as a ruler and monarch, so they honour him as the new king. And uh, then, I don't know how many days later, they decide that they want him done to death. And, uh, and somebody involved in an insurrection released instead of him. People are fickle, but God is true. To the response, you then back in morning prayer on Friday. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. 
They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. The Song of Zechariah with the refrain for common of religious. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, to remember his holy covenant. This is the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Saviour, sacrifice, seal, three in one, one in three. As broken and hurting and anxious people, if that is how we are feeling. We may know people who feel like that, if we don't ourselves thank the Lord just at this moment. We come to you praying for your affection and an experience and knowledge of that, for your provision. We pray that you will be um, attentive to us, that we will know ourselves to be attached to you, that we belong that you will respond and from that learn of our worth to you, that we may be assured and therefore be enabled to love ourselves and others as ourselves in the day ahead. We pray that as you were done to death, we pray that you put to death our voices that accuse us, our addictions, our fears, Injustice that affects us, our greed and selfishness that affects others. That your rule may be established. And we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. World Council of Churches, Colombia, Ecuador, Venezuela. We are thankful for the efforts by churches and people of goodwill for inclusive and respectful relations in society and government. So if they can do it there, it can be done elsewhere. We pray for and end the corruption in those societies and unsustainable exploitation of their resources. <clears throat> we give thanks with Christian action, research, education for people who down the years have contributed to our world and continue to benefit others through music, art, literature, other creative fields, entertainment, inventiveness, science, technology, education, medicine, politics and more. Especially those who've done it in the name of their faith. Turn his green Christian scrolling through to find today. Despite blocking efforts from nations, including Russia and Iran, a new international pact for the future has been widely adopted in efforts to accelerate government action to create a sustainable future for humanity. Thank God for that. <coughs> um, part of the COP28 <coughs> um, negotiations. It's got um, 50 action points that pertain to the Sustainable Development Goals. We pray that they are understood, promulgated, acted upon in their respective nations. We have five marks of mission as Anglicans around the world, the fifth of which is our engagement with the environment. Pope Francis' prayer for creation, borrowed from the Roman tradition, includes the lines teach us to discover the worth of each thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognise that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey towards your infinite light. Benefit Cycle Prayer on Fridays, we pray for volunteer organisations around the town. We pray for our own. As I have prayed, we need people on our committees. Many of our other um, volunteer organisations do the poetry that does non-clinical end-of-life support, bereavement counselling, 
Hospital Volunteer Centre, taking people to hospital and taking the medicines and other food, supporting us with the um, community larder in our church hall here, the food bank people, those who do the electric light switch on event, uh, World Day of Dance, whatever it's called, who look after our Millennium Green, or rather planted up beds across the town, Men's Shed, Men Cap, those who support the library and the schools. There are other people who keep the other religious organisations and other charities going. We thank you for them. We pray for those who volunteer as uh, politicians and uh, on boards like the um, Chamber of Commerce or its equivalent here. Those who volunteer as uh, gaining sponsorship and getting involved in activities to raise money. All these. We thank you for them and the life they bring to this place. And we pray for a change of attitude towards uh, rates and taxes. That uh, we as the community take our responsibility and establish accountable committees or allow local authorities to have their say as they traditionally did in the spending of that money. That we may not only give but also receive accountably. And those voluntary organisations, whilst we don't want to put them out of business, many of them are taking the place of things that otherwise we've taken for granted after the development of the welfare state after the Second World War. We pray for readjustment of our priorities as a community, not only here but around the world, not least again um, in the Middle East and indeed Europe and Africa. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tend on Yaraha at Lavenim, help by your force and Yark, Stokri, a hot espalosh, Chiki Safa Semena Ramapa Yana Halakasada Hot Samaran. Tend on Yaraha with Omasedi, Ibalavadiana, Stilikado for Hasmalas, Chikosan Ibrahayada for Hasmas, Omasan near the Kata Alasan. Tend your hoj or salad which you see Nikrama for Hot Masam Yosh was a me for a Makadem deal. Pibidia de Father Major was a ma for Hasmias in the Sakama Adianova. You had the Alan Sanfas and Mirahal, below your ocean for Semines. O God, you ever delight to reveal yourself to the childlike and lowly of heart. Grant that following the example of the blessed Francis, we may count the wisdom of this world as foolishness and know only Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the glory, and the power are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.